Hello, I've got something for you today. I've written it down in this book. This is my new notebook. I think you'll, you'll really like it. Uh, you'll find it very useful. It's called the 100-0 rule. And that's a short way of saying the 100% responsibility and 0% blame rule. It's the rule I used when I was going through a divorce and it really helped me a lot. So I want to share it with you because it's also helpful in any kind of challenging situation in life. Going through a difficult time, a challenging time, and you're looking for something to help you through it. You're looking for something that can help you deal with what's going on. This is what the 100-0 rule is for. So let's get into it. The 100-0 rule is about taking 100% responsibility and 0% blame for an important situation in your life. The 100-0 rule is strong medicine. So it might be best just to use it for a short while while you're dealing with an important issue. How long you use it for is up to you, but I suggest you at least give it a try. I first used it to deal with a divorce. I found myself going through an unexpected and unwanted divorce and it was very painful and it came as quite a shock. To be honest, I had a mixture of feelings about it. On the one hand, I felt angry and I felt very sad and at the same time there was a, a bit of a sense of freedom and relief as well because the relationship had become a bit of a struggle and I didn't really know any way out of the struggle. I didn't want the feelings of anger and sadness that I was going through around the divorce to define me. Nor did I want them to have too much say in the kind of person I would become in the future. Feelings like anger and sadness and even bitterness and despair have their place. But I didn't want them to determine the next steps of my life. I was looking for another way. And looking for another way, at some point the idea of the 100-0 rule came into my mind. The idea that I could take 100% responsibility for a situation, but also 0% blame was very appealing. I could accept the responsibility but would not get into all the self-blame and self-recrimination that comes with that. This means I could acknowledge where I was at fault or where I might have been at fault without any bitterness, negativity and self-blame. And that would make it a lot easier for me to learn and move on. It would also mean I could move on without getting stuck in a lot of blame towards my soon-to-be ex-wife and her role in causing the divorce. Therefore, the 0% blame also applied to her, as far as I was concerned. Whether she took responsibility for her part was up to her. Was it easy? Did the 100-0 rule make divorce easy? No, it was not easy. But applying this rule made the divorce a lot easier than it would have been otherwise. Divorce brought up deep feelings and deep issues. But although it was rough, by applying the 100-0 rule, I was able to ensure that that the divorce helped shape my character in a better way and not cause me to become bitter and cynical. It helped me to see through some illusions I'd been holding on to and to move on and see more of the true beauty of life rather than the fantasy that I was trying to live. The 100-0 rule helped me through one of the most difficult times in my life and that's one of the reasons why I want to share it with you because it really helped me a lot. Now, some of you may ob object to the 100-0 rule because it seems too severe, too harsh. Should it not be at least 50-50? We have to confront the idea that someone has to be blamed head on in order to break out of it. And that's one of the things that this rule does. It helps us to break out of the idea of blame, either targeting ourselves or targeting others. Besides, we don't need to live by this rule all the time. As I say, it's strong medicine, so it's a matter of deciding when and where in your life you want to use it. And like any strong medicine, you, you take it when you need it. And we don't need it, you don't take it. So this is how it works. You take 100% responsibility for an aspect of your life as it is now and apply 0% blame. So you don't blame yourself and you don't blame anyone else, but you take 100% responsibility for exploring your role in the situation your role in causing the situation, and looking at how you want to change in order that you create better and happier situations in the future. 
You do this because you want to come out of the situation an even better person. You do this so that you can find meaning, some kind of benefit even from your suffering. Because if it's a difficult situation, it's reasonable to assume that you're suffering in some way. Suffering is much easier to bear when it has meaning. You can give your suffering meaning by using it to develop yourself. You're more than just a victim of a capricious fate. You decide how the events of your life will affect you and your decision is that you will grow from them. Making the deliberate decision to use your suffering to develop your character helps give meaning to your suffering. So you don't feel like you're suffering for no reason. You can feel like there's some benefits from it, there's some direction coming out of it and you maybe not know the practical details but you know you have an inner intention to use this difficult or challenging situation to better yourself in ways that nobody can take away from you and nobody can take away your character from you. Remember, no self-blame, no recrimination, no self-judgment. What are the facts? The real facts you know for sure. What do you really know about the situation? Not things you're making up or might be making up. And you deal with them. You're willing to change in response to what you learn and discover about yourself in this process. Your goal is to develop your character, not to make anyone wrong. What can you learn from it? How can you grow from it? Any kind of attack on yourself, such as self-blame and self-condemnation, is only going to get in the way and you don't want that. You also watch for any tendency to blame the other person. You accept those feelings if they come up and find healthy ways to vent them if necessary. You get support in getting your feelings out, especially if you're the type of person who would not normally do that. You keep turning your attention to what you can learn and how you can grow. And you might say to yourself, yeah, this is difficult. This is painful. How can I learn? How can I benefit? How can I grow? You can ask yourself, what did I do to create this situation? But be sure to see the insights you get as helpful and beneficial, not as criticisms. It is probably better to ask, what can I do to create a better situation in the future? Asking yourself, what did I do wrong, might be useful, but it's all too easy for that to turn into self-blame, so be careful of that one. It is more important to ask yourself, what did I do right, so you can do more of it. Watch out for any tendency to exaggerate or turn the situation into a heavy drama or a catastrophe. You can handle it. You will handle it. And you will come out of it a better person. You know you will come out of it a better person because that is what you have decided to do. That's what you've committed yourself to. Life can seem harsh. It can seem unkind. It can even seem cruel. But this is only part of the story. Life can be filled with meaning and even with love. But we need to let go of our illusions first. Being disillusioned can be painful. But what else can lead us to a greater reality? What else than leaving behind illusions can lead us to a greater, a greater truth? You're not the three-year-old you used to be. Nor the 13-year-old you once were. Yet yeah, this growing up was not a loss to you. It was a gain. You have learned matured and growing. You will continue to mature and grow because that is what gives life meaning. Ultimately, we're all part of something bigger. Something bigger is what turned your three-year-old self into whatever self you are now. This is good, but it happened to you. You did not decide to grow and mature, but it happened anyway, often against your will. Now you can decide to grow and mature and participate in the process of your own evolution. You would not have wanted to be stuck as the three-year-old that you were. So why would you want to be stuck as the self you are now? Later when you see things from a bigger and wider perspective, from the perspective of your new self, the self you're growing into, perhaps you'll see that it was all for the good. Yes, it was painful at the time. It was hard. Perhaps you'll come to see it as being all for your greater good in the long term. The 100-0 rule can help you to ease your way into your new self. It can help you let go of the things and the situations 
which you were holding on to and be free to live life more fully in the present. It is only in the present moment that this newer self, this new version of you can be found. You can choose to resist the process of change, but that makes it more painful. That can make it very painful. Resistance is puerile because it makes change intensely painful. I hope you'll try the 100-0 rule. Experience some of the benefits that I've had from it. And as I say, it really helped me when I was going through a divorce and I've used it in other situations too. Blessings on you and blessings on your life journey. Go well. Thank you.